Hi everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and NVIDIA just recently released another GPU in their 600 series lineup based on the 28 nanometer Kepler GPUs. This is the GTX 670 and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing, an overview and some benchmarks on this which is Gigabyte's version. This is Gigabyte's Windforce overclocked version and just in case you want to be really specific, the model number is GV-N70OC-2GD. So here's a closer look at the box. As you can see, there's a big eye. Over here, there's some more important information, and that is that you get a 2048 megabyte or 2 gigabyte GDDR5 frame buffer for this card. It also runs on a 256-bit interface, and uh, there's some more information about that that I'll get into. You get DirectX 11 compatibility, of course, and uh, you get HDMI and DisplayPort out, as well as DVI outs on this. Also, fully PCI Express Gen 3 compatible, so if you're running... Uh, Gen 3 mo motherboard, you will get some additional bandwidth from that. And then uh, here's a look at the back of the box. Not a whole lot to talk about here, but I did want to point out specifically the Wind Force cooler, which uses direct contact heat pipes, as you can see over on this side. Direct contact heat pipes for the Wind Force cooler, which is very. There we go. Uh, direct contact heat pipes for the cooler. They have a triangle cool technology, which is uh, right where the uh, heat pipes go into the cooler. They have some uh, greater fan density there, and it's designed so that the airflow kind of goes over it and off to the sides. Anyway, enough about the cooler. Let's take a look at the card. So back to the memory. The two gigabytes of GDDR5 memory operates at 1,500 megahertz. Uh, you get a total memory throughput of 6.0 gigabits per second. Uh, again, GDDR5 memory, 256-bit memory interface. Uh, you get total uh, available memory bandwidth of 192 gigabytes per second, which is a lot. Uh, here is the video card itself. I'm going to real quickly go over accessories because there's not a whole lot of them. You get a couple power adapters here and that's for those of you who don't have a power supply with the proper PCI Express connectors. You need a 6 pin and an 8 pin for this particular card. That's because it's the overclocked edition uh, for your stock GTX 670s. You'll just need two 6 pins but a couple Molex to 6 and 8 pin power adapters there for you guys. Also you get a basic quick installation guide for installing a graphics card, as well as the Gigabyte uh, software and driver installation disk. And uh, speaking of which, we're using the drivers off of this for our benchmarks today. So um, that is the benchmark version that we're running. Let's take a closer look at the card. So let's start off with a measurement here. Gigabyte has gone with an all custom design for this card. It's a custom PCB as well as a custom cooler, uh, which is how they are juicing some extra clocks out of this. Uh, but as you can see, it is just short of 11 inches at the uh, longest point of the card, so we'll call it somewhere between 10 and 3 quarters and 11 inches, so make sure you have enough room in your, in your case if you're going to be purchasing this particular video card. And now let's take a look at the video card itself. So we'll start off with the Wind Force cooler. It has three separate cooling fans for that. The GPU on this card is located towards the bracket, so uh, it's right there underneath these modules. Uh, you'll notice that all of the uh, actual GDDR5 RAM on this is actually located on the opposite side of the PCB, so they do not need a, an extra, any extra protection or heat spreaders over on this side. So flipping back around, there's that uh, Wind Force cooler. As you can see, it's got a main uh, block of heat fins right here, and that's where you get that triangle design. Uh, that's located right underneath there, and then there's three copper heat pipes right underneath this fan that lead up to an additional radiator, radiator out on this side, and that's how they're doing such effective cooling on this card. And since I have been doing some benchmarks, I can say with authority that this cooler works very, very well. In fact, even running at 2560 by 1600, the hottest I was able to get the GPU uh, was 62 degrees Celsius, which is very, very cool for a GPU, especially under full load, running at 2560 by 1600 benchmark. So, uh, very good job with the Wind Force cooler, I can definitely say. Uh, here's a look at this end of the card. Not a whole lot to see, except for the uh, termination of the heat pipes right there. Flipping around to this side, you can see the uh, required power adapters, so 8-pin and 6-pin, both required in order to provide enough power for this card. Down here on the bottom, is our PCI Express 3.0 plug. Uh, this is backwards compatible, so don't worry if you're running a PCI Express Gen 2 or 2.1 motherboard. Uh, you, this card will fit in there, and you're not even really going to suffer much of a performance hit. It's mainly a bandwidth increase with PCI Express Gen 3. Uh, you get some efficiency in there as well. Um, but most benchmarks that have been run comparing the two to each other, right now with the current uh, range of video cards, you can't really saturate PCI Express, even Gen 2. So. Um, 
bear that in mind. Here at the other end of the card, we have our video outs. Let me just pop off the protective caps. You get a nice range of video outs on this card. Uh, so for starters, you get uh, DVI-D down here. I'm sorry, DVI-D up here on the top, uh, which is digital only. You don't get analog connectors for that, but you shouldn't be using an analog monitor with this video card anyway. Uh, down here in the bottom, you have DVI-I. So there you have uh, digital and analog. Both of these are dual link capable, so they can both run higher resolutions. Uh, finally, get HDMI uh, 1.4a output right there and a DisplayPort 1.2 output. So uh, you can run up to three monitors off of the single card, which is very nice. And uh, if that's not enough for you, you do also have the SLI capabilities. So let me just pop these off. There's your SLI connectors, which are stuck. There we go. So two SLI connectors there, so uh, if you so desire, you could set this card up with two-way, three-way, or four-way uh, SLI, and uh, having three or four of these cards would be pretty crazy gaming setup. I also wanted to point out, uh, over on this side of the card, you do have an extra metal bracket. Runs along this end of the PCB, and that's going to provide a bit of extra support and rigidity to the bracket so that the uh, weight of the heat sink is gonna, isn't going to be pulling down on the card too much. Some other specs about the uh, GTX 670, you, you do get 1,344 CUDA cores. Uh, and um, let me just give you, a comp for comparison here, the reference specs, uh, the base clock for the 670 is 915 megahertz, it has a boost clock of 980 megahertz. Boost clock is kind of an automatic GPU overclock that will take effect if uh, the video card determines that it's within the thermal parameters. So if it's, the video card is not too hot, it will enable that boost clock and give you a bit of extra speed while you're gaming or put a load on the card. Um, now those are the reference specs. Uh, this is an overclock version. So for the WinForce OC version, uh, the base clock jumps up to 980 megahertz out of the box. And then you have a boost clock that will range from 1,059 megahertz all the way up to 1,188. We actually saw 1,188.9 at the uh, highest range of the GPU boost clock. Uh, the memory again is 1,500 megahertz. Uh, you get two gigabytes. It runs on a 256-bit bus. Uh, overall, with the uh, overclock version here, you get a total texture fill rate of 109.8 gigatexels per second. Uh, and then again, uh, as we move into the benchmarks here, I wanted to mention that the max that the fan speed on this card got up to was 42% in any of the benchmarks that I ran, and the max GPU temperature, again, was 62 degrees Celsius. So uh, again, just a testament to the uh, great effect of the WindForce cooler that Gigabyte has put on here. Even though it is a two-slot cooler, it was keeping the uh, card cool and quiet, even while it had a pretty heavy load on it. You'll notice here we are throwing in some GTX 680 benchmark numbers for comparison. I uh, just wanted to point out these are my GTX 680 benchmarks. They were run prior to the GTX 680's release, so these are some pretty early drivers we were running with. Unfortunately, we don't have a GTX 680 still on hand to run some updated benchmarks, so bear that in mind when you're comparing the 670 to the 680 benchmarks that we have here. And that's going to wrap it up for this video. Once again, this has been the Gigabyte WindForce Overclocked Edition of the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 670 GPU. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed today's video, please head over to our Newegg YouTube channel, and don't forget to subscribe for more tech videos. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.